Question. Who's done an OnlyFans page? I've had two girlfriends come up to me today and they're like, girl, like you should totally start an OnlyFans page. And I'm like, mm, probably not. But I've thought about it and I'm like, maybe. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. This is why men protect what they get and what they invest in. No guy right, wants to be with a girl that has a for sale sign on her neck. And unfortunately, women don't advertise the same way men do. Girls advertise by putting pictures up and making themselves look available. Men advertise by actually going up to the girl and letting him know he is available. So you see how it's different here? So I would argue that your boyfriend, number one, was very secure because he told you the truth. And then number two, when you advertise yourself a certain way, put a for sale sign on your neck, which unfortunately is what social media is, and sometimes you gotta deal with the consequences. No guy wants to pay full price for a car with a for sale sign on it. I checked, but I think, I wanna say, like, about four million dollars. She. Yes, girl, crazy. It's such a blessing for real. Such a blessing. Yeah. Really good things, honestly, come out of working hard, no matter what you do. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And being consistent. They love consistency. For sure. New content. new content. Yeah. Yeah. Always like. And it sucks because like you know, sometimes it's like you know they always want more and more and more. But mm -hmm. it's like I'm just like I don't know. But maybe one day I'll do like two guys at a time. I've been Ooh. thinking about it. That would probably be your best selling video. Oh, for sure. They would love that. They ask me every day. Why don't you start an OnlyFans? You could earn millions in weeks. These are the type of questions Pokemon gets asked every day. A lot of people would say that I'm in a great position to capitalize off of having an OnlyFans. And why wouldn't she? As one of the most highest paid famous female influencers who's already making $2 million a year off Twitch alone, consisting of mostly a male audience. Even Bad Baby claims to have made over $50 million last year on the platform. Yes, us men let that happen. And for all the horny dudes out there praying that this one day does happen, it's not. It does doesn't matter how much money I can make. It's not enough. Because there's just nothing that I hate more than that torturous feeling of doing things that I don't like to do. I'm not taking my eyes off you. Three days later. Hey, SpongeBob. Hi, Patrick. Finding men to put in the friend zone used to be difficult. Having to feign romantic interest in exchange for lavish dinners, sensitive gifts, and emotional support was just so exhausting. But thanks to OnlyFriends, that's all changed. OnlyFriends is the first dating app that is specifically formulated for men looking to get friends out. It's the safest and most effective way to find that perfect someone that you have no sexual interest in, but they'll pay for everything. Which is how I met my bestie, Brian. Hey there. It was so easy. I just uploaded a few photos and within minutes, I had men looking to treat me like the queen that I am. The first time I saw Blake, mm -mm -mm, I knew I had no shot. That's right. There was no way she would ever be into me. It was cucked at first sight. But thanks to OnlyFriends, I get to perform all the duties of being in a relationship. Like going on dates, shopping, buying me gifts, listening to my problems, paying for my car insurance. Without having to do all the hard work like sex. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine? Gross. No. Same. I won't want to ruin what we have. Exactly. Unless. Ugh. No. That's what I was thinking. Because otherwise we wouldn't get to be besties anymore. Start loving him like a brother today. With only friends. You ready for that expensive concert I bought tickets for? Oh yeah! There's this guy going that ghosted me and I'm really trying to make him jealous. Oh, I would never do anything like that to you. Oh, I know, Brian. God, the sex was so good though. I'll tell you all about it. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on! I may be judged for selling pictures of my chocolate starfish on the internet, but at least I'm not in your DMs being a hey girl trying to sell you shitty ass products. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, mother Most people who hate on strippers are hating on their own lives, they're just projecting their own insecurities onto strippers that literally don't give a damn about their opinions. People like to argue, oh, but if, you know, you had some morals, you don't have any damn morals. You work at a company that's probably polluting our planet for a boss that's probably fucking up other people's lives. It's not about morals. It's just about thinking that you're better than other people. But realistically, nobody who is actually making money is going to pocket watch other people who are making money. They don't have any time on their hands left to worry about what the fuck the next person is doing because they're just worried about their own bag and their own bank account. And most people online that are hating on strippers don't have shit on their account. They don't even have a picture. They are probably one of the tricks that came into the club and got scammed and now they're gonna waste the rest of their life crying about that loss they took of that $500.
And I'm not going to sit here and say that strippers are some of the best angels on the planet because there's a lot of girls that I don't even fuck with. But just because you have a quote-unquote better occupation doesn't make you a better person. What really speaks volumes about a person and who they really are is how they talk about other people when it's business that has nothing to do with them. But also, most of the hate comes from a place where you don't even understand what being a stripper is. The job is not to sell sex, but I'm not gonna speak on that subject because, you know, some girls do what they do, but that is not the job, that is not the occupation. It is a sales job, and you are there to finesse as much as you can in as little time as you can. At least that's the correct way to do the job, in my opinion. So while I'm getting for work on Friday night to go work for five hours, you're probably getting in bed, mad as fuck about how your day went with a job that you hate and a boss that you hate, and you're about to go do it again. You're about to go do it again. And then you're gonna go on the internet and cry about other people who are getting a bigger bag than you by doing less work. Side note, jealousy and envy are really weak mindsets to have. Let's continue. I got a spoiler alert for this professional bed wench. The woman scrubbing the toilets for Goldman Sachs is far superior than her. Matter of fact, she's almost the lowest type of person in our society. She's just massively coping with these arguments. Sure, she's better than killers and predators and chomos, but that's a really low bar to start off with. And it's all fun and games until this broad hits the wall or can't make money off her looks or, most importantly, is rejected by the man she respects. You see, sure, she doesn't care what the average guy thinks because the average guy to her is invisible anyways, or what other females say about her because thoughts really hate each other anyway. But the man she dreams about, who she'll die for, who she'll never tell him about her stripping if there was no paper trail, is never gonna commit to her. He may never even sleep with her because he knows she'll try to baby trap him. There are famous female celebrities who made their money the honest way by making hit singles or are famous actors that are miserable with their mansions and sports cars and regret not settling down and marrying and having kids. So enjoy it while you can, sweet cheeks, because the clock is ticking. Every year, there's a new crop of 18-year-olds who are hotter and younger, and especially in the feminist society where 40% are raised by single moms. They'll be gunning for your spot on the dirty pole. They will put in extra work like give complimentary BJs in the back parking lot to make your kind of money. Let's see what this streetwalker looks like because she's already getting the double chin. Can I hear a little commotion for the dress? Hmm? A little bit? <laughs> now let's hear it for the back of the dress. That's it? Maybe she's working at a discount strip club. All that shit talking and she looks like an average gym thought. Let's see another video. Maybe it was the lighting. Who the hell is paying her to strip? Stevie Wonder? This just proves once again that females live life on easy mode. Maybe all the super hot strippers are doing OnlyFans now, and that's why they're letting mid-tier bed wenches do it. Or maybe I'm wrong. I thought strippers were supposed to be hot, but... Apparently not. Oh, and another thing, half of her video was complaining about people judging her. That's part of the job, bed wench. If you can't handle the heat, then don't be in the kitchen. Well, in your case, don't be on the pole. You traded your dignity for quick, easy money, so people could call you HOE all that they want. You can't dodge the accountability of being a streetwalker. So yes, anyone you meet, no matter how much more money you make, the average female that isn't outright selling her body or box is better than you. So a lot of you guys didn't know that I'm a sex worker. So I'm going to answer all of your questions while I do my makeup to make some videos for that. I started about a year ago. A lot of people asked why I got into it. I saw a video of a girl talking about it on TikTok. And then I started watching a bunch of podcasts and I was like, I want to do that. And so I started an account and I was like, bet this is going to be easy. Let's go. And then it was not. I had no idea how to get like followers or viewers. So I was making a tiny little bag off of random guys that I went to high school with. So this leads into the next thing a lot of people were talking about. A lot of people were saying, well, you can only make money doing sex work if you have a following. And let me tell you, I started with 2000 followers on Instagram and absolutely none on TikTok. So I decided to start posting on TikTok and copying all the other girls' videos. And what I learned from that is if you want to be successful, 
do your own thing, stop copying people, you'll do the best, make your own original content. A lot of people also ask, what kind of content do I actually make? And to that, I say it all. I am an experimental gal. So I'm always gonna try everything at least once. You're not living life if you don't. Unless it's illegal, then I'm doing it. I have a lot of people ask, how much do I make exactly? But I don't really like to talk about that. But I will say this job has given me the most financial freedom that I ever could have asked for. And to all of my subs, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity because I love you and I'm so happy. I've had a lot of girls ask like, oh, I'm interested. Do you think I should do it? If you have to ask someone else if you should do it, don't do it. Like everyone says, the internet is forever. There's a lot of risks in this job. So if you aren't sure that you want to do it, don't do it until you know for sure. I had a lot of people also ask, do you actually like your job? And I love it. The only part about this job that I don't love is TikTok. And not because I don't like making videos every day, I love making videos. But TikTok is just, it's a hard place to be. <laughs> Everyone's just a little bit mean. So it kind of gets to me sometimes, but it's okay. People always ask me if my family supports me. There's a lot of sex workers that I know that get disowned by their families or that don't have their family support. Thankfully, I have the most supportive family ever, so I don't really have to worry about that. But if you're a girl that's wanting to start, that's one of the biggest things that you have to think about because if your family doesn't accept you, you might not have a family anymore and you have to choose your job or your family. I've also had a lot of people ask if I regret it or if there's anything that I regret. And my answer to that is absolutely nothing. I honestly can't believe like how happy doing this job has made me. I feel like I get to express myself like exactly how I want to. And it just gives me so much freedom. I would never change anything. Anyways, that's all for now. Bye. You heard it from her. She started because of social media, precisely TikTok. Women have a hive mind. So if others are doing it, they'll do it too. It's part of their genetics to follow. That's why shaming is good, because if society doesn't shun this type of behavior enough and doesn't put the fear of God in them, they'll sell their soul. One of the top comments says, I feel this heavily. Love my job, but the internet is a hard place to be. Two years doing this now. Tough luck. And apparently, it's not hard enough. These females are e-hookers because they can't do anything else or they don't want to do anything hard. And that trolling from the internet is for life, so get used to it. I think a male commenter says, incredibly sad, I don't know what this world has turned into. And a thought responded, not sad at all, she is living an incredible life. Sure, her life is full of benefits and she's probably making more than a doctor, but it came at a cost. She's tainted for the rest of her life. Another thought responded to the comment, why does someone else's financial income affect you LMAO? If this was a man making this video, you wouldn't be commenting the same thing you are now. And you see how this Decepticon characterized this? With her comment, it seems like the man is just hating her for being a high earner. And this is how modern women will gaslight their bad behavior. They will in bad faith defend the least morally wrong part of their actions and act like that's what you're having a problem with. Like if you tell someone you're dating you don't want her to hang out on girls night out, she'll call you controlling and claim you're trying to own her like she's an object. When in reality, it's because she's putting herself in conducive situations to cheat. Because she's acting like someone who's not in a relationship. If she was going to Bible study you with other married women, there would be no problem. So, the thought commenter claiming or phrasing it as if the man has an issue with her for being a high earner just proves that these Decepticons know being a hooker is bad. Otherwise, she would have proudly stated the degeneracy like, why does someone else selling their own body affect you? And to answer her question, it affects us all. Because she's making videos on how great this degenerative lifestyle is because she she's financially free and happy. Also, she seems to have a lottery situation of having a trash family that accepts her being some kind of streetwalker. So, if this dumb hole got influenced by TikTok to sell her soul, her being an influencer will convince plenty of females to do the same. That's why it's wrong, bird brain. How are you still single? Perhaps it's the OF account. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Guys with self-respect don't want to date a human sex toy. If you turned your life to Jesus, put two feet in the church, became a traditional woman, you'd find yourself a good man instead of having to pimp yourself out to random creepy men online to give you money and attention. Dang, that's so tough. 
One thing about these Christian TikTokers is that they need to be realistic about how much a church can really do for these streetwalkers. It's not a reset button and some great guy is going to look past that fact that she was a cum dumpster. Suddenly repenting and reading the Bible is great for a life change, but it isn't the start over button on a video game. Because she's not the same as a dutiful, chaste church girl who's saving it for marriage. Let's take a look at the comments. Top comment says, she'll be worn out before she's 30. What they don't tell you is that OF is a gateway into being a real hooker, because Sims will offer her crazy money for real SEX. And because she's already tainted and on OnlyFans and taken that first step, the next step is into doing the dirty deed isn't that big of a leap. And then it'll be another offer, an offer from a Saudi prince to be peed on for a stack, and so on. And before she knows it, she's being rented like an Airbnb. Next comment says, Ladies, men like women with value. If anyone can see you or hit, there ain't no value there. Exactly. Men build value while women preserve value. Any female today that was born pretty has won the lotto. They just chose to blow it on hookups and sleeping around, instead of investing it in a marriage to one man. Another comment says, This woman still has the audacity to ask that question, but she's twerking at the club. Like what? Couldn't have said it better. Let's say she didn't do OnlyFans. Twerking at the club and posting that the social media is the status of a low-value woman. No self-respecting man is going to take her seriously after seeing that video. They're going to put her in the fun category and smash and dash. Sure, they might put in more work and make her believe there's a possible relationship. Then, when they get the box... Gotcha, bitch! If an attractive female asks why she's single, that's automatic disqualification for any type of relationship. It might make a million on all... You're trading a million for 45 to 70 years of loneliness. A million is a house. So okay it's it's not it's worth it, dude. There's a lot of life to live. This she gave up a three-year marriage to go to Miami. Publicly. A three-year marriage for Miami. She said, well, you didn't let me go to Miami. You say men? You no, no, threw, no, no, she threw no, away no, a three-year no, marriage. No, oh, shit. Damn, that logic broke her. She literally had a come to Jesus moment. This is why most modern women are alcoholics, druggies, or on some type of antidepressant medication. Because they can't handle the truth. They know deep down inside being an HOE is degrading. Being a glory hole makes them worthless. And this female crossed the line by becoming an e-hooker. Whether she made a milli or one cent, if she posted pics of herself on OnlyFans, it's the end of forever happily after. Top liked comment says, Oh, if it's not the consequences of my actions. That was probably the first time she had a father-daughter experience. Too bad she was probably raised by a deadbeat single mom and never had someone put the fear in her like that. Good masculine fathers will always remind their daughters all the time that if they do anything that brings shame to the family, they will be disowned. Matter of fact, fathers need to take it a step further and say even posting pictures with red cups on the internet, which implies them drinking, is shameful, or having SEX out of wedlock is shameful and disowned territory. Another comment says, Loneliness and wealth isn't worth giving up love and happiness. Can't buy love from a high-value man. Feminists need to get this in their thick skull and pea brains. We don't care what job you have, or what car you drive. How many degrees you own, because we can't screw those so it doesn't matter. All we care is that if you look good, and are friendly, and aren't an HOE, that's the bare minimum. In the US, a female that can do all three is basically more valuable than gold. That's how low the bar is in the feminist west. Someone else comments, Haha, her crying after finally understanding she chose Miami over her marriage is hilarious. The truth is, she wasn't qualified for marriage. That's why she left for the streets. The marriage was just a physical aspect of the metaphor. She traded the rest of her life, which is 50 years, for maybe a decade of the e-hooker lifestyle. That's why she broke down. Because she did the math and realized that she's immortal. This OF career is temporary, but her life is forever till she's six feet under. These MGTOW videos are just as important to females, because it shows them the reality of bad decisions. And if most men aren't saving the average female in the West that didn't strip on the internet, so these e-hookers have no chance of happiness. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think?
Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get 5 bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.